Greetings, greetings in the powerful, matchless name of Jesus. God bless you and thank you for joining the program, The Authentic Word, and I am Apostle Dr. Brooke Crawford. Wow, it is such an honor and such a privilege to minister the Word of God to you today. I am so excited, I'm so excited because our Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ, they are so wonderful, they are so amazing. And so here we are again, and it's such an honor. It is such a privilege, and I know you're going to be blessed by this program today, The Authentic Word, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord is right in you and with you and upon you right now. Hallelujah. And so we give all the glory and all the thanksgiving to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and Father God, and so they're excited for you too as well. And so let me pray for you and then we're gonna get jump right into the word. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we just come before you just ready to receive whatever you want to impart into us today. The power of your word, the anointing of your word, the goodness of your word, the healing virtue of your word on today, Lord God. And wow. Uh, it's just amazing who you are and how wonderful you are. So you have your way on your program, The Authentic Word. And so we ask that you anoint and bless the ears of the hearers and that they will not just be hearers, Father God, but they will be doers of your word as well. And so that they will allow the spirit and the anointing of your word to change their lives today. And we give you the thanks and the praise and all the glory and honor belongs to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God once again. God bless you and thank you for joining the authentic word. Wow. And God is so amazing. We're going to talk about the relationship, this beautiful, powerful anointed relationship between the father and the son and how we're connected to both of them through Jesus Christ because if it was not for Jesus who came and agreed with the Father to come so that he could get his family back so we could be redeemed because there had to be a price to be paid for the sin and for that decision that Adam and Eve made in the garden. So the Father says, I want my children back and so you agree to go down and be there for them to save them, to bring them back to me. Hallelujah, glory, glory, glory. What an awesome plan that is. And, uh, and it's still going on thousands of years later, even now. And so that's why Jesus had to come in the New Testament because that was the Father in the Old Testament. And the Father was, was very grieved and he was hurt and disappointed because his children that he chose to become his family, they, they betrayed him, they rebelled against him, they were disobedient. And so the father wants us to come back to him. He wants us back. And Jesus was willing to pay the price. Jesus became the word, he, he was the word that was made flesh. He was already all God in heaven. And so, you know, Jesus stepped out of the Father to come down to the earth through the womb of a woman. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that plan is so miraculous. That plan is so awesome that, that Jesus totally fulfilled all the law and the prophets. He came to fulfill. He came to save. He, did not came, he didn't come to destroy, but he came to, to save and deliver mankind all of mankind, whoever desires to be saved, who, and his, his spirit that causes you to realize that you need saving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. You need saving. You need Jesus. You need the deliverer. You need the savior. You need the healer. You need the way maker. You need the one that makes the difference. His, his anointing, his Holy Spirit. And so the three is one God, and there's three in one, three distinct persons. The Holy Spirit is a person. 
just as Jesus is and just as the Father is. And so that is the spirit of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. So that power is available because that spirit lives in you and I if you are born again, if you are a son of God, and you have what you need to become just like Jesus. And you have the victory in every area of your life. When you trust the word of God, when you believe in the word of God, when you act on the word of God, you have to actively act on the word and you do it by faith. Without faith, without the Holy Spirit, without the love of Jesus in you, it is virtually and it is truly impossible to become a son of God. And so that faith, the Lord Jesus gives us that faith so that we can believe in him and believe in the Father. So you can't have the Father without Jesus. Wow! Now, I know I've said that many times before on programs before, but I'm telling you how serious this relationship is between the Father and the Son and them working together to make our lives the way that he desired it to be, the way that we desire it to be, full of abundance, full of health, divine health, full of all that we need, wealth and prosperity to, to, with no end to it, just blessings without an end to it. And so now let's go to uh, the book of 1 John. 1 John, and let's look at chapter 4. And in 1 John chapter 4, here the Father is saying that without his Son, uh, we wouldn't have a Savior for this world. And so the Father sent Jesus to become our Savior. And that's why the Father wants us to honor and, and honor his Son. Because when you honor his Son, you honor the Father. And so they are both one in the same. And so let's look at verse... Uh, let's see, let's look at, let's start here in his love. Let's look at verse 10. Herein is love that, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son, there it is. He sent his son to be the propiti propitiation for our sins. And so that means we needed a savior because Without Jesus, you, you cannot repent. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no repentance. Without the Savior of the world, you wouldn't be able to repent. And so we have to ask the Father to forgive us and wash us and cleanse us by the blood of the Lamb, which is his Son, the Son of God. So that's why Jesus shed his blood because that's the Father's blood. Yeah! So that's how close the Father and the Son are. It's the same blood. So when Jesus shedded his blood on his way to Calvary, wow, all of that that was shedded by the 39 stripes, beaten 39 times with the stripes, and then, and, 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 so losing blood from his head, from the thorns of crown on his head, and, and the blood that was shed from the bruising, the blood that was shed from ripping his beard off, the blood that was shed uh, through his hands and through his feet. Wow. So God, in all his sovereignty and all his power, he was willing to sacrifice his own body, his own self, to come back, to return in order to save us because we lost everything. We lost salvation. We, we lost everything when Adam and Eve sinned. And so we lost the spirit of God that lived in us. Wow, that loving, kind, long-suffering, patient spirit of the Holy Ghost 
They were made out of that beautiful spirit substance. Wow, the Holy Spirit. And so God, what happened was when they made that decision, when Adam made the decision, because he could have disagreed with Eve and said, no, no, I'm not going to eat that fruit. Nothing's going to happen now. I cover you. Uh, our decision has changed. And so I will not eat that fruit with you. So he could have done that. But no, he agreed because that is what he desired in his heart. And so, you know, that's what God looks at. God looks at what is in our heart. What is our attitude in our heart toward him? And do we trust him? Do we believe in him? And so that's what matters to him, that we believe him and that we trust in his word. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And so, and we're going to jump down. We're going to jump down now. So he said, and that he, so he came to pay that price. And so, and if we love one another, he says, God dwells in us and his love is, is perfect in us. So that's how we become perfect is through the love of Jesus. And we can only receive that love when we make that confession of our sins and ask him to wash and cleanse us with his blood. And we are forgiven because we ask for it. And so we are saved because of the confession that we made with our mouth. And he just wants that confession to be genuine and sincere with all of your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Because it, it, it takes complete surrender to the will of God. And so if you want Jesus to come live on the inside of you, you will make that confession today that Jesus, I ask you to cleanse me and wash me, Father God, and make me your son or your daughter and come and live on the inside of me. And so you've got power living on the inside of you because of that power that you receive. And you receive the spirit of God, eh, yeah, to come live back inside of you because that was all taken away during that decision. So decisions are important. Decisions are powerful. So meditate and think on the right decision. The Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom that you need for the right decision. And so that decision is to believe that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. And let's look at that in verse 14. And he says, and we have seen and do testify that the Father, hallelujah, sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So anybody who questions that, all they have to do is look in the Word and you'll see it there already written for you. And so you believe that Word. And everything that comes out of Jesus' mouth is the truth. Every word that he gave the disciples to speak is the truth. And so the disciples and the apostles that wrote these books by the leading of the Holy Spirit, praise the Lord. And so what did he say? He sent him on purpose to be the Savior of the world, so that whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God. So you must know and you must confess that truth, that Jesus is the Son of God. And you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they said, oh, you're blaspheming because you say that you are the Son of God. And and Jesus says, no, you see that I do the works that my father do. My father sent me. So him and his father remained one. They were so close. You know how you are with your own son or daughter, and you're close to them, and you're almost like one, or with your spouse. That's why God says you're one. And why? Because you are of like mind, like character, like attitude, and, and the same spirit. That's what makes us like Jesus. That, and so when we repent and ask him to come and live in us, his spirit live in us, we can be just like him and we can be perfected because that's what love does. Love can bring you to perfection. And in love, there is no fear. And so faith 
you can't operate in faith if there's fear there. So you have to receive it, you have to believe it, and once you believe it, you can receive it. And so, he, what did he say? So whosoever confess that Jesus is the Son of God, that means God dwells in that person. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he in God. So you're in him, and he's in you. Hallelujah. And you know and believe that the love that God has to us, because God is love. He can't help himself. That's the only thing he could ever be, is love. And so he, he's so in love with us, he had a way, he had a plan to get us all back. Now, this is the Father, because the Father sent the Son. And so the Father is greater than the Son. And so the Son said, the Father and I are one. And now I'm going to show you that scripture, too, in just a minute. And so because of that, uh, there, there can't be any imperfection in love because there is no fear in love and perfect love cast out all fear because fear is torment. Wow. Now I'm in verse 18. And he that fears is not made perfect in love. So if you're in fear, you just need to grow in your love. Your love in the Holy Spirit because it's in there and so it needs to grow. It needs to mature. Now let me show you this in John chapter, let me show you this in John chapter 10. Let's go to John 10. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John is the one that talks about the love the most and the father and son relationship the most. And so that's why John could write these books the way that he did. Uh, in John chapter 10, and let's look at verse, uh, verse 29. John 10, 29, and in John 10, 29, that's exactly what it says. Uh, he's talking about how Jesus was talking about how he was rejected by the Jews uh, because he said he was the son of God and they didn't believe him. And so they said he was blaspheming. But, but Jesus told them, just believe me for the work's sake. So Jesus answered, look at verse 25. Jesus answered them, and I told you, and you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name. See, he does this in the name of the Father, just like we do what we're supposed to do in the name of the Father. And you heard me pray in, in the name of the Father. And so he said, uh, uh, and pray to the Father, hallelujah, and the works that I do in his name and that I bear witness of me. So, but you believe not because you're not of my sheep. So those, those are those who accept him, accept Jesus and received him. They're going to believe what Jesus say. And Jesus say, when you believe what he say and do what he say, you will prosper. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You'll be set free. But not just because of that, but because you confess him, because you trust in him and you trust in his word. Hallelujah. And so it's not anything that we do that gets us into the kingdom of God. It's all what Jesus did. And that's why we get to uh, get this gift of eternal life, of eternal salvation. Because the Father said, I give you this life and you give it to them because you paid the price with my blood. Hey, yeah, hallelujah, that was shed it and you were beaten and bruised so that they could receive redemption. Hallelujah. And so, and he said, my sheep know my voice, they follow me, and so forth and so on. And then look at verse 29. He said, my father, which gave them me, is greater than all. He's saying every person, every son and daughter, no matter their age, no matter where they come from, no matter who they are that, that get born again, it's his father that gave us to him. Hey, yeah, hallelujah. He said, my father did that, gave them to me. Look at that. And he's greater than all. My father is the greater one. And no one is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. 
Don't you know nobody can take you away from the Father? Hallelujah. When you have accepted his son and the price he paid for your life to get you back in relationship with the Father. Hallelujah. And so he said, and look at verse 30. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. They are one. One God in two persons. And don't forget the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead. Hallelujah. So that is awesome. And now let's jump down to, uh, let's see, let's go to verse uh, let's go to verse 35. And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. Say you of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. So he's saying again, he's telling them, look, my Father sent me here through the womb of a woman to testify to you who the Father is and what I came for. And so you receive the Spirit of God because of that. And so he said, and you say I'm blaspheming because I say I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But because I do do the works, you should believe me for the very work's sake. So you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. And so now we're going to go back to 1 John. Let's go back to 1 John chapter 5 this time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. This is so good. And he said he gave his son to the world. So 1 John, and let's look at verse 10. And it says, he that believeth on the Son of God have the witness, oh wow, in himself. Do you know you are a witness in yourself? Because the witness of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus living in you. And so you are a witness that what? That Jesus is the Son of God. Wow, he that believeth on the Son of God have the witness in himself, and he that believeth not God have made him a liar. You don't believe God, you made yourself a liar. <laughs> because he believeth not the record that God gave of his son. God gave his son to the world. And we already read that twice in two different scriptures. Hallelujah. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. You cannot have eternal life without Jesus living on the inside of you and accepting Jesus as your Savior, as the Son of God. Now let's read it again. Verse 11, that God has given us eternal life. How? and this life is in his son. Wow, so he that has the son has life. Ah, oh, wow, that's amazingly wonderful. That is a miracle. If you have the son of God living on the inside of you and he's with you everywhere you go, he said he'll never leave or forsake you. He says, if you have the son, you have life, and he that have not the son of God have not life. So. I counsel you by the mighty hand of the Holy Ghost to receive the Son of God, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He's your Savior. Go to him, repent, and receive him, and let the Father finish the work that he already started in you because he put a desire in you for you to know the truth and to have a relationship with him. And only through the Father's Son can you receive the Father. Hallelujah. So I want you to join me next time because we're going to continue on this marvelous relationship between the Father and the Son, our Savior, 
the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't forget my book, The Church That Makes the Difference. And God bless you, and I'll see you next time on The Authentic Word. Shalom, shalom.